Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Mark Gibson, Reed Fischler, Larry Bailey, and we have three new patrons, Nelik, Bob, and Zubyoha. Thank you, everybody. Welcome them in, everybody. Thank you, Nelik, Bob, and Zubyoha. On this episode of DTNS, should it be illegal for AI to be wrong? Europe and the UK make weak default passwords illegal. And tips for tech when you're traveling to set up an event. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, April 29th. Happy birthday, Meg. 2024 in Los, and in Las Vegas. I'm Tom Merritt. In Las Vegas, I'm Scott Johnson. And, and I'm the Vegas, producer. I'm <laughs> and uh, that's our uh, producer, Amos. Hi, Amos. How are things going not in Las Vegas? Uh, very not Vegas. <laughs> uh, of course, Brian Ibbett, host of Coverville, uh, with us, ho yes. co-host of TMS Vegas. Thank you so much for having me. Scott Johnson. Hello. Host of all of the rest of the podcasts yeah, on we, the internet. Uh, about a year ago, we tried this another time, and let's see if we can do two. I know. know. It's, it's, yeah. it's lovely. Let's, uh, let's go two for two, starting with the quick hits. Are there any Apple fans in the audience? Apple fans? There the are. Audience? There's, uh, don't be shy. It's, it's fine. They're so be Apple, proud. they're just you're in, safe, you're in a safe place. You're yeah. in a very safe, safe place. Like, very stylistic. Uh, <laughs> well, here's a roundup of the news leaks and credible rumors regarding Apple's upcoming announcements. First, the news. The EU made the very predictable decision that the iPad OS is subject to the same rules under the Digital Markets Act as iPad iPhone OS, iOS. Uh, that means that the iPad's going to get third-party app stores, alternative browser engines, all of that kind of thing in the EU. And Epic already said, yep, we'll bring Fortnite to the iPad. Uh, credible rumor here, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says the OLED iPad expected to be announced on May 7th would have an M4 laptop chip and neural engine in it. That could mean we hear a lot about Apple's AI strategy at the iPad announcement instead of just the hardware. German sources also say Apple has reopened negotiations with OpenAI to provide some cloud AI services for the next version of the iPhone's operating system. Uh, Apple's AI tech itself is expected to all be on device, so it'd be a, kind of what they do with Google, providing the cloud version. And German sources tell him that the next version of the Apple Vision Pro headset is now expected at the end of 2026, but Apple's still trying to work on how to make the parts cheaper so it can sell it for less of a price. All right, how about any Android fans? Android fans? Yeah, see, this is Apple very politely raised their hand. Android fans are rowdy and <laughs> yeah, making noise. Yeah, they taught us a yeah, lot about that's that. That's interesting, divide, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Google Play Store now lets you download multiple apps at once. Something that has been testing since 2019. Uh, simultaneous downloads of app updates in the works as well. And with Google I.O. coming up on May 14th, uh, the leaks about the new Pixel 8a phone continue with full videos, specs, and the like. Uh, if you don't know, the A series usually has close to the same specs as the main series, but at a lower price point. I'm not going to ask if there's uh, fans for the next story. Tesla CEO Elon Musk traveled to China, where the government removed restrictions on sales of Tesla cars after it met the country's data security requirements. Tesla was among several EVs to get the approval, including BYD, Lotus, Neja, Li Auto, and NIO. Bloomberg reports that Tesla will partner with China's Baidu to offer maps and navigation and potentially Tesla's Level 2 autonomous driving feature. That's the one that they call full self-driving. OpenAI continues to sign agreements with publishers to use their data with permission to train its large language models. The Financial Times has reached a deal that will let ChatGPT users see summaries, quotes, links to articles, as well as add Financial Times attribution to some of its responses. FT will continue to use ChatGPT and some of its tools on the web and then get access to new tools as OpenAI develops them. OpenAI has made similar deals with lots of other publishers, Axel Springer, Associated Press, not the New York Times, though, which is pursuing a court case for copyright infringement against OpenAI. Uh, and if you've ever got a notice from the U.S. Postal Service with information about your package and been like, huh, I don't remember having a package coming, don't click it. Email and text messages that pretend to be from the USPS are used to let people compromise their devices or hand over personal information. And Akamai did a study and found that traffic to the fake post office websites is almost the same as the real post office website uh, and passes it during the holiday shipping season. So uh, when everybody is expecting a package, it's more likely to work. Uh, the fake domains look similar to the real thing. Uh, you might see usps-post.com. 
world or dot me uh, so that's something to keep an eye out it should not be those uh, they also lead to websites that are designed to look like the real thing so the safest thing to do if you're in doubt is to just copy the tracking number go to the post office website yourself the one you know is real and then put in the tracking number there Monday, the United Kingdom became the first country to make it illegal for a manufacturer to sell a product with universal default passwords and easily guessable default passwords illegal. Thanks to the Product Security and Telecommunications Infrastructure Act of 2022, they can still sell products with unique default passwords. You can have a default password, it just has to be unique to that device uh, rather than something that everybody would know. So no more selling a device with admin or 123456, et cetera, as the password. Uh, the problem is, in those cases, many people don't change the password. And in cases like smart home devices, that can mean millions of devices with the same password, which attackers can then get into, easily infiltrate, and install malware without the owner of the device even knowing it. Uh, that led to the Mirai botnet attack, which took down websites with a denial of service attack back in 2016. The EU has a similar thing coming. The Cyber Resilience Act will also impose rules against insecure default passwords when it comes into effect later this year. And even if other countries don't, join this and pass similar laws, uh, the companies will make this the standard for the devices wherever they sell. So it's going to benefit everybody. Uh, I'm, question for you guys. Do you always remember to change the default password when you install a smart home you device? You do that? Like you get like Absolutely. a yeah. like your little, you got a cool mesh network at home. We Is that do. like the first thing you did was? For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because that, that, and that, that right out of the box, you absolutely yeah. do that. But I think also about, um, I've got 3D printers that are online and I hear stories about mm. people who, um, use the uh, like octoprint cameras to then take control of the printer and drive the print the hot print head into the uh, uh, into the uh, just to damage platform it, huh? yeah. and just to start fires because then they can watch the mayhem on camera with the, <laughs> it's like they just they are the Joker they want to watch the 3D printer burn yeah, yeah. <laughs> some people I don't like do that they at print all. the yeah. world first so then they can <laughs> yeah. Yeah. then burn yeah. the world and then watch it burn yeah it's funny because um, I always just have this assumption that they don't ship with passwords obviously they do because a mm -hmm. lot of the instructions will say first put in admin one two three four and then mm -hmm. go change it and they encourage you to do it but I am so it's so pounded into me to do that immediately yeah yeah and it's also part of my single password two FA so solution for everything else so it's just always a go-to like a new thing software hardware doesn't mm -hmm. matter let's get a password let's make it crazy mm -hmm. yeah yeah get it in there so i i guess i just, just thought everybody thought that way well it, yeah. it, first of all not everybody knows this right. right like you 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 and i do and uh it's easy to be like oh yeah i need to do that oh wait you know the dog's peeing in the middle mm -hmm. of the room hold mm -hmm. on i'll be right Correct. back or, or whatever <laughs> not ripped from my recent experience or anything <laughs> uh but but like, like you don't have to raise your hand and be embarrassed but like how many of you out there have been like oh right i needed to change that and i forgot and maybe you went back later or something but yeah you know I it see, can happen it can mm -hmm. happen right? also yeah. uh i don't know why the manufacturer shipped with predetermined passwords in the first place why isn't it just demand it, at the time of installation. That, that seems like the better way to do it. I would do it, do it that way. There's and probably that would some comply e with this law. There's probably it? some ease in, in testing and, and software flow and everything to oh, have yeah, something. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could figure some somebody could go into a store, somehow get one of these things plugged in, a mesh router plugged in, set the password to they want, see who buys it and then or, or just knows oh, that it's yeah. online knows yeah. the mac address of it and there's then... there's a little bit of security too if you set it up and you never pick the password someone could hack into it and, and set then it set it up it mm -hmm. and you not realize it and so having a password that is unique and maybe on a card shipped with the device yeah that makes yeah. sense it's a little yeah I, and i lose those cards so that's another good reason to change the password right away because i can never find the instruction manual that says it's root admin yeah yeah <laughs> that's the, that's the password. you're like one two three four five or one two three four five six <laughs> exactly it doesn't yeah. seem like that much admin or that much back end to have to worry about generating these passwords that's a pretty easy well, they thing they have to now. manually put or not manually but put a sticker on it that's got a unique yeah, yeah. and, and you have to match that right. up there's a little but those systems are pretty yeah. well established you know mm -hmm. so yeah. it's there's, there's this is good this is a good thing mm -hmm. like i know there'll probably be some gnashing of teeth probably in some manufacturers will be like well this mm -hmm. is a huge pain but i it probably isn't and is good for us as consumers so yeah let's yeah. do it a uh, European privacy rights group called NOIB has filed a complaint against OpenAI in the EU for violating the General Data Protection Regulation, a.k.a. the GDPR. Any GDPR fans out there? <laughs> the one European in the audience is a fan of the GDPR. Okay. Uh, the GDPR has a rule that you, has a lot of rules, but there is among those rules a rule that people have the right to correct erroneous data about themselves. That seems reasonable, right? 
something's wrong on a search engine, you get to you know change it. Somebody, something's wrong on a, on a website, you can say, hey, that's not that's not correct. That's not my actual birthday or or, or something. Uh, in OpenAI's case, it's got a f complaint against it because ChatGPT got an Austrian person's birthday wrong. The person used ChatGPT said, what's my birthday? I put their name in, uh, and it gave the wrong birthday out. The person then filed a GDPR request with OpenAI saying, you gave the uh, incorrect information, please correct it. OpenAI responded that it can't do that. It's technically impossible to correct a chatbot's spontaneously generated responses. OpenAI did offer to filter or block the data on prompts that included the name of the person who filed the request, uh, but the person didn't want that. The person wanted to request that all, the, the person could have also requested that all their data be removed from ChatGPT. So, so it could have been filtered. It could have been like, we'll just not have it answer any questions about you. Uh, but the person didn't want either of those. And under GDPR, you have the right to the specific correction you're asking for. He said, or they said, I just want my birth date corrected. That's it. Uh, the complaint also alleges that OpenAI violates the GDPR because it can't disclose what data it generated on the individual or where it comes from. Uh, this is not the first of these kinds of complaints. There was a similar one filed by a security researcher in Poland last September. Italy has an open investigation into ChatGPT's generation of incorrect information. And if you don't know, large language models like ChatGPT don't have a database. They don't look things up. I know it feels like they do, but they are really just trained to figure out what the likeliest next word should be or the next pixel if they're generating an image. So they're good at making predictions, which is why they get stuff wrong, but there isn't a database to correct. There isn't a thing to correct. So OpenAI is right that it can't correct the information. It can only filter for what you prompt it for or what it puts out. Uh, now, the, the court is going to have to rule on this, and I think it's going to be really interesting how it reasons it out, but what do you all think? Should it be illegal for a tool to be inaccurate? Well, it's funny. We just talked about this Wednesday. I was I generate core notes. You know, we did core on Thursdays. When I'm done, I copy all our notes out of this big spreadsheet, and I tell ChatGPT to summarize it in an 800-character or less paragraph, and then I'll go in and manually tweak it and add things and stuff, and it just saves me time. Um, one time, usually it does it. But one time I said, please do that. And I always say, please, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's just polite. I really do. Just in yeah. case. When they you know. take over, they'll yeah. remember them. I say thanks and everything. I really do. <laughs> anyway, I did it and, it, and it came back with something that was about 1,850 uh, characters. And I said, that's, not, that's more than 800 characters. And it goes, oh, you know what? You're right, it is. Here it is again. And then it pooped it out again. And this has happened in other scenarios where it isn't just me trying to do a tool use of the thing. It's like I want to ask it a question. I'll say, I'm looking for this video game. came out in 2012. has this name on it, uh, but I don't know the actual title. It'll say, oh, that's absolutely this. And I'll say, that's not the game. Oh, you're right. That's not the game. Here's the game. No, that's not it either. You know, right? You, and it's telling me, oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. That's yeah. not the game either. <laughs> and it's it's kind of this moment of realization. And it does that because that's what people do on exactly. the internet, yeah. and it's trained yeah. to exactly. act like what, yeah, yeah. I think this is about us training ourselves to understand. And maybe this is on OpenAI and others as well to do a better job of educating people on their how their services work. But it's on us to realize, oh, this isn't Google. Mm -hmm. This isn't even Bing, who's using it. Open AI Which gets confusing to... because Google combines its exactly. AI, Bing combines its AI. Yeah, yeah. so it's it, for, for home users, we're hearing that robots with super information are supposed to tell us our exact answer. And that's what we think going into these, and it's not really what they're doing. Right. Like, not even close. Sometimes it gets it right, and you're like, whoa, this thing is amazing. And then the next time, it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. That's not the name of the movie. Here's the name of the movie. No, it isn't. Oh, you're right. It's not the name of the movie. <laughs> like, that, that is frustrating unless you change your mindset about what, an, what a large language model is and how they actually perform. S side note, without filters, yeah. it would argue with you and try to convince you that it oh, is right, because sure. that's also yeah. what we do on the internet, they but get, they filtered that part out. Yeah. So if you start to do that, cut it off, try again, and that's why it's always like, you know, you're right. Yeah, they should do a, uh, there should be a chat GPT competitor called Gaslight, spelled L-I-T-E, <laughs> and let it just go. Let it argue with me all there's day some open, There's yeah. some open models out there that, that can be just like, like that. Like, if you search yeah. for one of your favorite artists, you're doing a big yeah. Coverville episode. Yeah. 
and it gives you wrong info. How does that Sometimes feel? I don't even know it, though. Like, if yeah. I'm looking for a birthday and it tells me, oh, you know, uh, uh, so-and-so was born on this date 50 years ago. Great, I'm going to do a show on them. And then I hear from listeners, no, that person was born three years later and blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. I, I, it's, I know the tool, and I know I'm taking my chances with it. And I like that better than the alternative of saying, okay, this Aust- Austrian guy didn't get any presents, whatever, on the day he wanted a lot of presents. And, but he went in there, okay, and said, Make you know, make my birthday this. What's to stop someone from saying, okay, make and Brian of it says, make my information say I'm a professional male model. Well, because so GDPR just, says you can only request inaccurate information to be corrected. You can't right. under GDPR say say I'm not something. A podcaster, I'm a professional male model. It, and you'd have to prove to the European Union in front of a court that okay. you're a professional male model well, for to win that case, I, right? I think just showing up in court. I mean, it, no. in your <laughs> case, yeah. maybe but, that's true. But, okay, so that's an yeah. extreme example. But, but yeah, the, what GDPR, this is the interesting question, though. You're getting right to the heart of it, which is GDPR says if something's incorrect, and you can demonstrate that it's mm-hmm. incorrect and prove that it's incorrect, then the company has to change it, mm-hmm. right? That all seems reasonable, but these tools can't always be correct. Mm-hmm. They're right. not good enough they're for that from yet. Multiple sources and so does which... that mean that they should not be allowed to be used? I mean, that's really... Because under GDPR, there's an argument that they should not be allowed to be used. Mm-hmm. Now, a judge may look at this and say, you know, this is, this is not contemplated by GDPR, and therefore this is an exception, because you can be wrong on the Internet. It's just that certain websites under GDPR can't, and the yeah. judge may decide that this is an exception. Well, the, 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 the laws around this, as they currently stand, are based on the idea that things are being stored and displayed and asked for and returned yeah. and all that. And, and it doesn't apply to comments. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't apply mm-hmm. to that, does it? Right. So maybe that just... Like everything, you have to go, oh, well, we got to think outside this current box that we're in. And this new box is this weird random thing that isn't like what it used yeah. to be. And th- maybe they're not equipped to do that quickly. That's the biggest problem with this sort of legislation is how quickly can you keep up with the changes? And it sounds and like it, they're a little slow. And it's it's going to change things, certainly in Europe. And, and that's a big market. Uh, if they say, nope, uh, you're not allowed to have this tool unless it's uh, accurate. Because that means they're going to have to put in a lot of filters, yeah. and mm-hmm. so it's going to slow down the usefulness. A lot of companies will just withdraw. Anthropic is a French company, uh, so it would apply to them. Uh, and you don't want your LLM to be terrified. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want it to be so. I know I don't mean literally, but programmatically. You don't. You don't want it to be limited. I don't in, want. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to ask a question. I have to go. Well, I can't ask. I can't ask it, it it's, already it's, is more limited. limited than yeah, what's the yeah. point of the tool? Right, so right, I just right, think right. you have to think of it that way and figure it out. Yeah, you know, you almost wanted to be able to say, I'm finding conflicting on information about that subject. I'm finding two different answers. But it's not that. finding. Well, that's, okay, yes, that's right, the problem. Right, right, right. Yes, it's, it's just not Google. It's, it's predicting what to say next. Right. So yeah. it doesn't even work like that. No, you, you can't. You can't yeah. change. That's yeah. the. That's, that's why that's it's the complicated issue. and yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if you are a large language model or a human and you would like to tell us something about the show, email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We'd love to hear from you. We traveled, well, who here is from Las Vegas? Okay, so you traveled a short distance to be here. Uh, The rest of us traveled a little bit longer to be here. Uh, And it took a lot of technology to put this together. Not just the Daily Tech News Show that we're doing right now, but the entire event for this week. Uh, Ibbett's got games going on. Mm -hmm. Scott's got uh, like stuff that he brought to give away and stickers and everything. So I thought it would be good to talk about some of the travel tech we use, not just to travel, but to put this on, uh, and, and Brian, let's start with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you. You had some really good thoughts about like how to think about the technology and the planning and, and what to do. Yeah, I mean, you start by figuring out what the venue has, right? So we're doing a show at the Sand Dollar tomorrow night, and, and fortunately we've done it last year, but prior to last year, I, I, I don't live here, so I can't just go up and say, hey, what do you have? I need to call or have somebody at boots on the ground go there and say, okay, tell me about your setup. What are you using for the projector? What are you using for the audio? What kind of connection do I need? And don't just say, great, those three things are all I'm going to bring. You kind of have to say, all right, let's say something goes wrong. I need a direct connection, an HDMI cable, or I need to bring my own adapter. I'm going to bring the, the you know, same thing that changes an eighth-inch plug to a quarter-inch plug or whatever. And uh, it seems it seems obvious, but when you're packing for something like this and space is at a minimum because you want to you don't want to have to pay exorbitant fees to to ship stuff out or or check another bag you want to have just enough to where you've got your your plan a and your your plan b covered and have a backup yeah, and even if they tell you 
the answers you mm -hmm. want to hear for the three important things you say. Let's right. say, uh, how's the internet? How's the audio? How's the video? Yeah. Let's say yeah. those are your three things. Yeah. Over assume that if you bring a box of adapters, that you should bring all of them. Mm -hmm. Just bring mm -hmm. them. No mm -hmm. offense to anyone listening in here that helped us get this room set up, but the point is, like, you never know. Yeah. Right. So right. if you got USB adapters, you got HDMI adapters that seem crazy. No way we're going to need a nine pin right. serial deal. Bring it anyway. Yeah. yeah. We're streaming because, off an Ethernet cable because right. that's the best way. Wi Fi is flaky. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I asked for an Ethernet cable. They gave me a very long, awesome Ethernet cable because the plaza is awesome. Mm -hmm. But I still have an Ethernet cable in my backpack just in case. Just yeah. in case. Yeah. Because even if they give you one, it might be broken. And do you want to like try to chase down the person that's supposed to give it or do you just oh, want to uh, use no. the one you brought? Yeah, exactly. Right. Because it takes away time. Mm -hmm. uh, coming here, I brought an, a long HDMI cable just in case because they've got a projector on the sand roller. But I also brought the plan A, which is an Apple TV that I can plug in right there, Wi-Fi connected to my laptop, not have wires to have to trip over and things, but but bring them both in case Wi-Fi is bad, there's some interference or something like that, or or the wrong kind of connection. Yeah, yeah. another example of that is power outlets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's never assume you're going to have enough of those. Uh, I, both for um, doing an event like this, but even just traveling, just staying in a hotel, you don't know if you know, the lamp that's on your nightstand is going to have a power outlet or if it's even going to work if it does have yeah, one. Right. So, and if you know you're going to need cords to, to connect things and charge, get one of those little, um, they make these great ones and I wish I would have brought it here, but it's on the nightstand in my room. It's a little, it's a, a little compact deal. Um, three regular power outlets, two USB-Cs and a USB-A and the whole thing is like that big, but you can unwind a cord that's like this long from it to plug it into the wall. So if that plug is behind the uh, nightstand <clears throat> and you have several things you're charging and you don't want to be like, okay, let's unplug the iPad and plug in the, the phone or whatever, you just have that one cord that comes up and plug everything. Oh, yeah, in. that's Never nice. assume that any place you go is going to have enough power outlets. Yeah, because they, yeah. they almost never do. They almost never this do. Unless happens. you're properly and, prepared, in yeah. which case they're and, all over the and place. And as soon yeah. as you unplug it, you're going to pull the whole wall side because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hanging on by. We had this very problem, though. Our room yeah. has uh, it's a, one of the new renovated ones, mm -hmm. but the, the what do you call that? Between the us, nightstand. the credenza thing, yeah. nightstand, mm -hmm. had uh, has ports on this side, ports on this side, and mm -hmm. none of the ports are working on my uh, side. Uh -huh. So... What did I do? I went, well, good thing I brought the brick and the thing that's just like the normal old fashioned, let's put it in there and put it on the floor thing if I have to do it. Yeah. You just, that that's a, obviously for personal use. Yeah, but it's but true it's, for the event stuff too. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. crucial. Yeah. Like all yeah. the stuff we see laying here, we're all gonna take it for granted later, but all of this is- But it's because you had it it's that redundant. we didn't have to spend an extra right. hour yeah, I even got my phone working as a camera over there. Yeah, so the, this was a, a yeah. fun thing we kind of jimmied up at the last minute. Uh, and thanks to Joe for being willing to put this together. Thank you, uh, Scott, for letting us use your phone. Uh, but you can use a phone as an external camera. Yeah. Uh, uh, iOS has it, Android has it, so that you can connect it to your laptop and have a second camera. We're using StreamYard, uh, which allows you to add that second camera as a presentation. But... We ended up not doing that because mm -hmm. we realized, well, hold on, StreamYard, because it's browser-based, uh, can just work on the phone. Mm. So I just sent you the link to join StreamYard. You joined from your phone. It actually made you download an app. Made me go get an app, which, which I is don't know if it always used to do that. I don't think it did. Yeah. Now they have an app, you, and I, it took seconds, and it was up and running. You have to log in or do anything. It yeah. Uh, so, nice. so having that kind of flexibility as technology gets better is is. is but cool it's also well. a good example of uh, what I love about where we're at right now and where we're headed. We're, we're heading toward a more modular a place where production can be done by saying, well, here, use my phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. wirelessly, I don't have to think about it. It's like we're, we're getting to a place where our, our devices are also working as very convenient hotspots and mm -hmm. uh, tethering ways points. Ways to start our cars, ways to, you know. All that, all that stuff. That I stuff, really yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some downsides that I'm not currently thinking of that you'll hear about in the comments. But There always are, yeah. There mm -hmm. always are. But I, I love that Joe could just say, hey, we need a second camera, can I use your phone? And mm -hmm. I can say yes and no that this is all just going to work. And yeah. that's cool. So, you know, as much as we overthink like bringing extra stuff. Nertacular is way too. We'd bring so much extra mm -hmm. stuff. Half mm -hmm. my trunk was full of stuff we'd never use. Even though you live, you know, even though I live down the valley, it's down still a pain. In case you need something, you don't want to have to do exactly. That. Yeah. Who knows when another rock slide every hundred years? <laughs> you never know. Right. Yeah. But um, but but even then, we are getting better and better. 
it, it, you know, in a place where we're not going to have to dig into that second bag. And that's mm-hmm. good, but always, you know, always be prepared. One, one last tip that you brought up, Scott, when we were, <laughs> when we were uh, talking around. Uh, I, I uh, picked up this thing. I kickstarted it, uh, but now it's available for general, general purchase, which is uh, Cocoon, K-O-K-O-O-N. I've talked about this on TMS, but this is my new favorite travel device, home device. It is a, it's a, um, a pair of sleep earbuds that is small enough that it, I can lay on my side, I can lay on my back and not have any interference. I wear a CPAP. I look like Darth Vader, but that doesn't interfere with it at all. But look more like Anakin right I now. I kind of look like Anakin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like those weirdos in the Sphere movie we just watched. That's correct. Yeah. Yes, right, exactly. Like that, yeah, yeah. And then I take it off and I go, <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Like only 18 people got that because they saw the movie. Um, but uh, uh, this thing's not only good for you know trying to fall asleep and and needing kind of the the tinkly tinkly noises to to kind of get that going. But we're close to Fremont Street. Some of you people are on the front side of the building. You might have a window that overlooks. Oons, oons, oons central, and um, and these things do a great job of blocking out that sound. So it's almost like you know. There, there's another great tip: find stuff that consolidates multiple things in yeah. one. Instead of having a uh, noise blocker, the, the squishy earbuds, and then a sound thing, combine them and have a thing that's that's. And how do you spell blocker. it? How, what? Uh-huh. K O K O O N. I think it's dot I O if I remember correctly. Cocoon dot I O. It's the new hotness it's, when you're doing And it's doing Phillips, your, and yeah, I yeah. love it. Your yeah. cool new product. Yeah. Yeah. Dot I O's baby. All right, before we get out of here uh, for DTNS, let's check out the mailbag. Uh, Mike in Dubai wrote uh, regarding our discussion with Molly about the CHIPS Act on Friday. uh, I'm going to have to side with Molly. The pandemic was a factor in concerns over supply chain resilience, but it isn't a a once-in-a-hundred-year event. It was part of a series of events. Russia invading Ukraine, U.S. cutting off China from USIP, rising tariffs, attacks in the Red Sea and Persian Gulf, underscoring how vulnerable our economy is to supply chain disruption. The nearshoring trend we're seeing, which is not, we have to bring everything into our country, but you know, build a plant in Mexico and Latin America to supply the United States and Canada. Uh, and the dispersion of factories ensures that we aren't reliant on a single source of critical supplies, whether it's chips, medical supplies, batteries, or anything else. I don't think the need for resilience is protectionism, to the extent it increased costs, I see it more like the price of insurance to avoid another 2021, 2022. Love the show as always, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike. That, that's a great point that it doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't have to be uh, protectionism. Everything has to be done in the country. There's, there's a good way to do that decentralization. Uh, and then Dan wrote, agree with the team here concerning the Apple Vision Pro. Apple is playing the long game here. At $3,500, you are extremely limiting your market share. However, you have developers purchasing these to start building a library of apps for the two to three year consumer priced model. This gives Apple time to lower the cost of production and in the meantime, have a full catalog of apps that have been developed over that time. Not to mention all the buzz and free marketing they've gotten since its release. Long game it is. Yeah, so, yeah. and they can afford the long game because then pockets are deep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they, yeah. time is their friend, and it's totally going to work for I them. I don't know how they way. walk with those pockets. I don't know either. <laughs> Tim <laughs> Cook needs big pockets. <laughs> he likes big cash piles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Scott Johnson for being on Daily Tech News Show. I know it's a busy weekend for you. Yeah, so it's I pretty crazy, but it's great to having you here with us. Having having this part of the event is has uh, kind of become the... St- it's mm-hmm. a nor it's a thing now. It this actually is what we do. kind of lends credence to the whole week. Yeah, we have, you know, <laughs> you give us credibility. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate that. Um, but no, it's uh, it's uh, it's an amazing experience. I love being on Wednesdays, but when we get to do this live and hang out and friends get to see each other and talk about this stuff, you can't beat it. So yeah. thank you for having me on, uh, Brian Ibbett, uh, Anything yes. else you want to add? Uh, again, yeah, thank you for being here, being part of this thing, letting me. Uh, terrorize you with uh, tasks. Thank the, you for including me into that. Oh, gosh, that's so much absolutely. Fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wish you'd be here Wednesday for the final task. Yeah. The scars that that, the literal scars yeah. that, that thing is going to leave. <laughs> and I, I know this is a crazy busy week for you, too. So I really appreciate oh, you my taking pleasure. your time yes, thank as you well. So much. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. Uh, we went to the Sphere in Las Vegas yesterday, and the three of us are going to talk, probably some of the folks in the audience, too, about whether it's the most amazing movie theater we've ever been to or just a pale imitation of the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, <laughs> also, thanks to the audience for being here. Thank you, guys. You can catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back tomorrow. Talk to you then.
the DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>